Hello, everybody. It's the real Mr. Squid here. Welcome back to another episode of the Dire Wolf 20 pack. I hope y'all are having a good day. I'm having a good day. We're starting here in the basement today because I want to show you guys what I did in between episodes, auto crafting wise. I set up uh, all the machines, almost all the machines that I think we're gonna need for at least a long, uh, you know, a good while. We got our thermal series machines. We got our mechanism machines. Uh, the trickiest part was definitely these infusing factories because they need their catalyst along with, you know, what the main component that you're crafting is. So for uh, for this first one, it's the redstone. Let me see if I can show the recipes, you know. So how you make the infused alloy, it's the iron, which is the main ingredient, and then redstone is the catalyst. But I couldn't, uh, when I tried to input them both using a crafter, it would not work because you have to input your catalyst and your main crafting component on different sides. So... I had to slap an enrichment chamber on top that always is being fed with redstone. That's the way these all are. They're always being fed with their, uh, you know, their catalyst component being enriched and then always being inputted into the infusing factory. So just to show off a little bit, let's, uh, let's make probably the highest tier alloy. Let's make a couple of them, like 10 or something. Okay, let's take these out. And let's take these out just so this can get going. I really wanted to show off here. Let's make just two or something. So, that one already went, this one's going, now the last one's going, and it is that fast. That craft is done. So yeah, that is pretty, pretty cool. I also upgraded this to a netherite crafter, so we have a lot more recipes, so that's good. Because, you know, that normal crafter was not only a little bit slower, but only had 9 patterns, this has 81. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, what are we messing with today? As I said last episode, I want to do some automation of Botania and maybe a little bit of astral sorcery, but nah. So to automate Botania, we're gonna need some stuff from astral sorcery that we haven't really messed with yet. So let's open up the book and take a look at that. We are going to need to make celestial crystals. And to make celestial crystals, you need to make celestial crystal clusters. And to do that, I will show you how to do that right now. Now, when I open this chest, don't be surprised, but I've already done I've already made a lot of uh, celestial crystals, so we don't have to worry about that too much today. I just want to show you guys the process of how they're made. So we've got a small little display here. So what you're going to want to do is take a bucket, a stardust, and a normal rock crystal. Okay, a bucket of starlight. And you want to do this over star metal ore, because it'll not only make it go faster, grow faster, because this is a crystal that has to grow over time. You're going to want to uh, drop your stuff in, your your stardust and your crystal. I, I can't drop stuff. I don't know what's going on. Uh, there we go. And when you know you're doing it right, you'll see these blue particle effects happen. Did I, I have my magnet on. That's why I can't pick it up. Oh my goodness. I'm trolling. I'm trolling. Okay, there we go. So this will slowly form into a cluster. Okay. Now you don't need to put it on star metal ore, right? But it will make it faster. It'll grow faster. It uh, might get better stats. I've, as I've read, as it says here, it is recommended to have the cluster grow on a block of star metal ore for several reasons. The magical radiation of the ore will generate sympathetic magical eddies in the crystal that accelerates the growth process. There we go. So let's wait for this crystal to grow. And there we go. So, you have to wait till they are fully grown to break them and get anything. Now, a good way to know is they will be giving off particles and they will be a lot bigger than this when they're fully grown. And another tip that I learned a long time ago is, okay, so if we open up our F3 menu, okay, over to the right side, we can see a, a targeted block. Uh, I can't really point, but you, you should be able to see a targeted block, astral sorcery, celestial crystal, right? And then you'll see a stage and a number. Okay, so right now it's at the lowest stage, it's at stage zero. You'll know it's fully grown when it's gotten all the way to stage four, all the way to stage four. So that is how you grow celestial crystal. Okay. Now, why do you want to grow a celestial crystal? Well, that's kind of the reason why I haven't done anything with crystals up to this point. And the reasoning behind that is because normal rock crystals are okay. Like, they're fine. But celestial crystals are better in every way. They can collect more starlight. They can transform more starlight. They can focus more. They're better for rituals. They're better for tools. I mean, we're not going to be making tools, but they're just better. So... Now today we're going to look into Celestial Crystals. I made 64. I made a full stack. It was kind of ridiculous. I had an 8x8 out here, and I filled it with buckets of water, or starlight. It took forever. But today we are going to be making a Collector Crystal. 
Now, uh, Astral Sorcerer has changed a little bit from the last time I've used it. Last one I used it, it didn't have all these different stats. It just had size, which was an actual number. Uh, the max was 900, if I remember. Purity, and what was the last one? It was like, it was purity, size, and something else. Shape, I believe. Okay, but for the means of a collector crystal, there's only a certain amount of stats that are important. You're going to want a good size, a good purity, a good shape, a good collection rate, and if you're doing a specific constellation, a good focus. Okay? Now, the most important among those is purity. But, I mean, the odds of us, even with, the, uh, even with 64 crystals, the odds of us getting that perfectly are just, like, none. So that is where our star metal cutting tool is going to come into play. We are going to break up these crystals and combine them till we get our ideal crystal. So, purity 2. This actually has a couple, this has a good amount of stats. This has purity 2, collection rate 3, and then a focus of Decidia and Lucerna. Okay, so now for the different stats, this purity collection rate, they have different uh, maxes. So purity 2 is the max, but collection rate 3 is the max for collection rate. Okay, and for focus, it's two. So, for this crystal, what we want to do is we want to hack off that Lucerna. Okay. We want to break off that Lucerna. Uh, that Lucerna focus. And then we want to add, I believe, a size and a shape. And then we'll have everything we can have. Uh, another reason why celestial crystals are better than plain old crystals is because plain old crystals can only have a certain amount of attributes. While... Now, I'm not saying Celestial Crystals have Unlimited, but they can have a lot more. As you can see, these were just, uh, these were crystals, these ones, these uh, Celestial Crystals were just like this when I put them in the liquid. They just only had one attribute, and then look at the way they came out. It was so many. Okay, so I'm going to show you the basis of splitting, and then I'm going to do the rest off camera, because it's going to take a long time. A very long, long time. Okay, so we're going to split this. What did this split into? Okay, so we got Purity 1, Purity 1, and we did break down our Lucerna and our Decidia. They're separated. Okay, so this is good. And the reason why you want Fortune on your Star Metal Cutting Tool is because whenever you split a crystal, you have a chance at losing uh, an attribute, and Fortune reduces that significantly. Okay, so we're going to keep splitting that. Keep splitting this. It's, they're kind of hard to split, I'm not going to lie. I don't really love this splitting like uh, mechanic. Like... I understand that splitting is cool, but a different way to do it, like, even in your inventory, crafting would be kind of, I feel like, better, but it's whatever. Okay. So we got Purity 1 collection. I think we lost something there. I'm not sure. But, um, and the way you combine the crystals back, right, once you're done, once you have all the attributes you want, is you take a bucket, put it down, and you put your two crystals that you want to combine in. So collection rate one, collection rate one, collection rate one, purity one, purity one, collection rate one. So we could combine these, right? Okay. And this should go up to purity two, collection rate two, focus to city of two. Okay. So we just gotta wait. Oh wait, we only put one crystal in. I'm a I'm an absolute fool. Huh. Okay. Uh, there we go. So when you see these white particles, that means that it should be combining. Yeah, the different color particles do mean different things. So let's let's see how they combine. I just want to make sure I know what I'm doing here. I did do some research because this this totally changed from the last time I messed with these crystals at all. Okay, let's see if I was right. Purity two, yep. Collection rate two, yep. Focus the city two. Perfect. Now we want to knock off this Lucerna fully. Hopefully, and that should have done it. Okay, this Lucerna, we don't really want this at all, but I'll keep it over here just in case. We need it for in the future. Now, if I, th I think I know what I'm doing, we should be able to get this to Purity 2, Collection Rate 2. Yeah, okay. So, this crystal already, we got a, we got a pretty good start on it. Like, it had pretty good stats to begin with. Um, we're pretty close to, like, a top-tier crystal. All we need, I believe, le uh, all we need are size. We need the size attribute to add on. And I think the shape. So 
So I gotta find a good size and a good shape, but that and there look there. There's a size three. There's a shape three. Let's see if we can find a size three, shape three. There we go. This is the crystal I'm gonna use. Okay, let's see. This has purity two of max. This has collection rate three, max, and our focus of Decidia. Now, why did I choose Decidia? That is a good question, which you didn't ask, but I'm answering anyway. I chose Decidia because it is a bright constellation. It is a constellation that is out most nights. Therefore, it will be a little stronger. You know, like, because I'm, I'm fairly certain that when a constellation is not out, right, and you're trying to focus starlight from it through a crystal, it is, it's lessened. So I chose a bright constellation. Like, I could have chose any of the brights. I just chose that one because it had other good stats along with it. I could have chosen Armara, Avidus, Avorcio, anything. But you don't want to choose a dim one because, you know, it's not out as much. And the reason why it doesn't matter is because we're not doing any ritual effect. So there's not going to be any special effect. We're not putting it through a refraction table or anything like that. We're just pure starlight. Okay. So I'm going to keep this up. And I will be back when I have our awesome crystal. If you guys have any questions, I, I feel like I explained that pretty well. I hope I did at least. Uh, the, you know, the combining and the breaking down of attributes. But, you know, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Anyway, we'll be right back. Okay, everybody. We are back. And I have added all the size onto it. And then I went to go add the shape, you know, because that was the last attribute that we needed to have a almost perfect crystal. And then I remembered that Celestial Crystals, even though they can have more attributes, they can only hold 10. So size is 3, purity is 2, collection rate is 3, and Decidia is 2. The focus of Decidia is 2, and 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, it's, it's maxed out on attributes. So, I have these extra shapes for no reason, but that's okay. It was actually really, really easy to do that. It, I mean, it wasn't, like, quick by any means, but it wasn't difficult. So all these crystals, I don't know why I made so many. This is ridiculous. I probably only should have ever made like four. Also, this has not grown. Um, even one stage. It grows faster during the moonlight. Anyway, the next step is to turn this into a collector crystal. Okay? So it'll collect starlight and all that jazz. Now, how do we do that? I kind of forgot. So we're going to have to look into the book a little bit and grab some resources and stuff. Probably wait till nighttime even. So let's see. Uh, collector crystals. So this is a structure that we can put our collector crystal on once we make it. And what it will do is it will make it work even when the constellation is not out. But when but when the constellation is out, it won't make as much as it normally would. So I don't know if that's worth it because we chose something. We chose a constellation, a, a bright one on purpose. So it's it's there almost every night. Or five out of what eight nights. Five out of eight nights, it's there. That's pretty good. I mean, we'll probably make the structure. We'll yeah, we'll make the structure because it'll it'll be enough starlight. Okay, so how do I turn this into a collector crystal? That's not how. That's not it. Got to be in here somewhere. What the hey, my dude? Okay. I assume we just do what we just did, but with, um, oh, it has to be attuned to become a collector crystal. Oh, I'm so silly. Right, it has to be attuned. I forgot. Okay. So we're going to have to attune it to, um, Decidia, because that's what we're using. So let's grab our Decidia. There it is. Put in our offhand. How many, um, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. And there should be six up there. Put this in our offhand. Oh. Top over here. Man, this looks nice. The reason why I put this up in the sky is because you get more, like, starlight easier. But once you're at the highest tier, it could be down on the ground. It doesn't really matter. You can definitely max out starlight either way. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many were there? Were there seven? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, yeah, there's it. So we're not going to be able to set this up till nighttime, unfortunately. So what we can do in the meantime... How much time we got left in the day? Oh, the moon's coming up right now. Um, 
we can quickly just get something together because, you know, the Starlight's going to have to gather and stuff like that for the Botania side of things because we're working on the Astral Sorcery side of things. Now we've got to work on the Botania side of things. So we're going to need some Kekamaroos. So, you know, you might know where this is going already. Pixie Dust, we're going to need 12 of this. We're making 12 flowers. Rune of Gluttony. Oh, dang it. And then we are going to need uh, two white, two orange, and two brown petals. Okay. Let's just grab a stack of each. We have so many flowers, it doesn't matter. Okay, and then all we should need are some seeds to make these flowers. get these going. So I made this. This is from Mythic Botany. I made this a while ago, this little uh, Aquapanthus. And when given mana, it is supposed to uh, automatically refill, but there's no mana over here, unfortunately. Really, this is not in range? I feel like this should this should be in range. Interesting. Let's um, try slapping this up right here. Does this get mana now? Yes, but it doesn't fill this. Okay, until we get things situated, we're just going to put this here. Nice. And one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and seed. Nice. Okay, so let's just do this. Get all of our stuff in. I like the little blue water ball. Let's take a look up in the sky and see if we see Dissidia. Oh, don't tell me it's a night where there's... Oh, there it is. Nice! I was kind of worried. I was like, man, if we got unlucky with the knights, that would be a pain. Okay, that's all 12 for us. Now that we have that, that's most of our Botania side of it done. Let's hop up here and get our nice crystal attuned. This is definitely going to be a little bit of a longer episode, that's okay, because it's going to be pretty sick once it's done. Okay, now that we're holding this piece of paper, it tells us where to put it since it's nighttime. Put that there, that there. Nice. And you just got to drop, all you have to do is drop our crystal in once it has the stats that we'd like. It's a tuning to the city. It looks so beautiful. That's definitely screenshot worthy. Oh man. Props. I said it once, I'll say it again. Props to the mod author, man. Cuz this this is just such a beautiful mod. Okay. So now, this is a Dissidia Celestial Crystal. It did not change its stats. It's currently tuned. And now, we should be able to turn it into a Collector Crystal, I'm thinking. It almost, it's okay, it's almost midnight. Ha, <laughs> midnight. What do we need here? <clears throat> Illumination Powder. Resonating gem. I think we have resonating gems. I really hope so. Oh, we only have three. It's okay. Let's grab some aquamarine. And then we need some illumination powder. We have so much of that stuff. We need normal stardust. I think that's it. I think all we have to do is go make a resonating gem. Has this grown at all? It's It just got to stage one. Yeah, it is, it is a slow process. That's definitely why I did it in bulk uh, the first time around. Oh, we're being chased by phantoms. It's okay, we're faster than them. That's actually so not true. Yo, why are you so fast? Yo, leave me alone, leave me alone! He was just zooming. Okay. We're gonna have to grab our resonating wand and an aquamarine.
Nice. There's something later that we can make that will um, automatically keep all of these liquid starlight reservoirs filled. It's uh, So that should be pretty cool. Come here. There we go. Okay, so it should be what? Put this crystal here. And then what was that? What was that? Okay. Is that it? That's it. Okay. <clears throat> do it. Do it to it. Make our crystal amazing. So these attributes are, uh, you know, important to get because if you just use a really bad crystal, then your, you know, your collector crystal is going to be really bad at collecting anything. And that is not what you want. I haven't really explained why we're making this collector crystal. And the main reason we're doing that and how we're going to implement that into Botania is using a very early thing that we learned in Astral Sorcery, and that is, I think it's even page one, maybe? No, it's probably, it's probably the second, second uh, area we learned. Okay, maybe it's a third, <laughs> maybe it's a third, maybe it's a third, maybe it's a third. Here it is. Starlight Transmutation. By putting Starlight into a block, it will change it. And, since we're making, using cake flowers, we are going to have pumpkins put down, and they are going to be transformed into cakes, which are then going to be transferred into mana. So it's basically like free mana. Let's go test that out right now. There we go. Let's get some pumpkins. We got 4,000 pumpkins. Yeah, more like 4,000 mana. Am I right? Okay. So as this is now, this will work. Let me put this away, this uh, paper. Uh, as this is now, we can link this to stuff, and it will work. You don't need to build the structure. Let's see how fast it is. Should be relatively quick. That was quick. That was very quick. I'm very happy. That, that means that this is going to go quite well. Now, can I just break this? I can break this, right? Oh god, that was that was scary. Okay, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. I don't know. I was like, oh man, all that hard work could be gone in a second. It's not what we want. But we're going to want this to run all the time, so we're definitely going to want this structure. Where is it? Here it is. So we're going to need to... Let's get all this stuff going. Let's also make some block placers while we're at it, because we're going to need to automatically place the... Um, the pumpkins. The block placer... That's the right. Let me add a dropper, actually, real quick, to our recipes. So I just know how to make those. And block placer, go. I think we have one block placer in here already. We have two. So, as you can see, like... Uh, real quick here. Look at how much cheese this guy has done. What a hard worker. Like, honestly, I'm so proud of this rat. Okay, and we can put these petals away. Um, let's see what we're going to need for that structure one more time. Five chisel, twelve rune. Five chisel. Twelve. What else are we going to need? Nine marble and five engraved. Engraved. How much engraved was it? Was it five? It was five. And one last thing is one marble pillar. And then we just need eight buckets of starlight. Okay, so let's go build this thing. I, uh, I'm so confident. And why do we need all this mana? We need all this mana for Mythic Botany. Like, we're going to need to make lots and lots and lots of mana. So much, like, this is going to make lots of mana, so I'm not even worried about breaking these. I know you're probably, you're like, oh my god, you're breaking f full mana pools. You're insane. I am insane. Okay. So, <clears throat> let's get this going now. Uh, let's get the structure probably going, like, right about here. So, the very bottom of it, it 
Did I not get enough marble? It's nine marble. Nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. And just because I like to keep things the even amount. How many? One, two, three, and then the final block? Okay. One, two, three, and then this block. Back this up one block. I like to keep everything kind of symmetrical, at least a little bit. Okay. Then on the corners of these. I'm fairly certain on the top. Okay, yeah. And then all 12 of this should go around. If I could place blocks, which I can never. Okay, let's fill this up with liquid and get it going. So we should know that this is working. I believe what this structure does is it also allows it to work during the day. Which is, which is nice. Okay, and it's got to be one block up. Yes, okay, it's working. We can tell it's working because there's red effects. The liquid's going up. Is there just a... Did you just do a, did you just do a thing? Okay. I'm not going to worry about that now. Not going to stress about the small stuff. Let's get this going. Uh... That's not where I wanted that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now we got to make sure that our crystal has line of sight to all of these, and I, I think it does. Are these not facing up? There we go. They are not. They are not facing up. This is going to be a thing and a half. Let's uh, let's let's knock this down to normal. We have to go around this whole area, place them all special like because I don't know a way to rotate them. I just chose I only uh, chose twelve because it seems like a nice square number. But I'm not quite sure how many we're actually going to need. Or not like need, but like, what I meant to say was I'm not sure that one crystal will be in... Is this wrong too? Wait a minute. What the heck? I am so confused. Okay guys, I'll be right back when I get to this setup. <laughs> okay guys, we are back. I was being extremely silly and didn't realize that these holes were where the blocks came out of and I didn't realize that you had to change these to be redstone mode on. But as soon as you do, it works. It works just fine. I'm not quite sure if um, we might need to in the future make a crystal prism here so it evenly divides all of the starlight. But uh, yeah, no, I, I double checked and made sure this works. These all have mana in them because there was already some cakes that were generated. And this should be pretty good. So I'm not sure if I'm going to get a mana spreader over here or if I'm going to get that Mythic Botany Mana Collector. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, the Mana Collector. But we can't do that yet because we don't have the Rune of Valheim. That's... Oh my goodness, that is just... Netherite Ingot? Elven Gateway Core? What do you want from me? Okay, well, I might make that. But anyway, uh, that's cake. Let's get this into some mana pools. We'll probably put like... Uh, some, yeah, we should probably put them here. That'd be cool. Like maybe like nine on each side or something. So we'll put this side's nine here. And I'll make some more in the future. And we'll put nine over there. It'll be nice and even and distributed. And we're going to transfer the mana from these over to both sides. And then even further along 
so that these stay full of mana. The stuff over here gets the mana it needs. Uh, this as well. I'm probably going to set up a botany pot with pumpkins, or I'm just going to uh, export. I'm going to run a cable underground over to these and just export pumpkins into these, keep them filled at all times. That's probably what we'll end up doing. Because that's just easier. So yeah, I think that's going to be it for today's episode, guys. I know it was a bit of a longer one, but it was, you know, it was a little more in-depth. I had to do complicated crystal stuff and all that jazz. But, uh, well, I, I guess we should probably get some of the mana transferred over. Let me go get a spreader real quick. I wish I could fly. Are you done yet? It's only at stage three. It's been 30 minutes, dang you. I mean, that's not that long, actually, but it is if you don't have a lot of time. Let's get a elven mana spreader over here. This poor sp spreader is going to get destroyed. It's not going to be able to handle all the mana it's getting. I bet these are going to transfer really fast at night. Let's see if I can make the floral obedience stick. What that should have done is that should have linked as many uh, of these flowers to this as they can. I thought that's how it worked. There we go. So obviously this is too much, uh, this is way too much mana for just one spreader. But you guys get the point, just for a uh, proof of concept. Now let's get a bunch of pumpkins going on. Oh, I put them all in one of these, didn't I? Dang it. Which one did I... It was... Where did I put all the pumpkins? The pumpkins are... It's this one, isn't it? Where are the pumpkins? They're gone. A full stack of pumpkins has disappeared. Oh, there it is. Okay. And this is kind of what this is going to look like. I could even, if I really wanted to, I could potentially put a third storage of 3x3 mana pools in here. I'm not quite sure yet. But anyway, guys, that is going to be it for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Thanks for stopping by. Um, another thing I just wanted to say real quick uh, before we end is I, I do have a Twitter, and I do try to upload, or not t upload, but like tweet whenever I'm releasing a video and stuff like that. And if there's ever not a video, you can check the Twitter, and I'll definitely tell you guys uh, why not there. I'm not saying there's not going to be videos. I'm just saying, like... If something happens, I'll let you guys know. And uh, yeah, definitely check out the Twitter. Maybe like, comment, do all that, you know, all that fun stuff. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until next time, peace out.